So being that, you know, it, it's Pete, he probably does not um, see a lot of kids. And so he's, this is, it's starting to kind of seep into his territory in a place where he felt comfortable. He's almost now being thrown off. And this was his defense mechanism. At least that's how I perceive it on a psychological level. Um, but like I said, uh, we reached out to his counselor, uh, we reached out to Leo's counselor, the, the counselor was like, how did he handle it? And I, I told her the truth, I said, you know Leo's sense of humor, <laughs> he's enjoying making this guy squirm a little bit, um, and, and she, she got a good kick out of that, she liked that, she thought that was funny, that is definitely the way Leo is, um, and it, it's the beauty of, it's the beauty of Leo, and it, it's one of those things that I, I, I wish for every... It's funny, I say the word Leo and the dog's tail starts wagging. Um, it's the thing that I wish for every transgender individual, whether they're a child or a grown individual, a grown adult. I, I wish that confidence for everyone. I wish that, you know, when someone faces them or, or tries to, to block their, their, their beauty, the person that's coming out that they have they have that confidence they have that ego they have that for Le for Leo it's almost like a dark side it's this Mwahaha, let me mess with you um i want that for them i want that confidence i want everybody to be so comfortable in their own skin that it doesn't phase them in any way shape or form that you know, somebody misgendered them, or somebody doesn't like that, uh, you know, they're, that, you know, they're presenting the way they're comfortable. I was going to say that they're wearing a dress, or that they're wearing jeans, or that they're wearing boots, or wearing makeup, or a wig, or, or that they, you know, shave their head, or, or whatever. Um, I, I truly, truly wish that mentality for every single person out there who's transgender. Because it's so... Like I said, it is so liberating. It was so... It was so much... As, as angry as I was at that doctor. As angry as I was. It was amazing to see my kid not back down. The doctor goes, well, you're going to want a family someday. And my kid went, no, no I'm not. And if I do, I can adopt. I can foster. Um, well, you know... What made you go through this? You know, usually this is a, a trend thing. Or did you follow anybody? No, no, this was something that, you know, Leo started exhibiting behaviors of at the age of four. At four years old, kids don't understand trends. They don't understand that it's the cool thing to do. They like Teletubbies because they're Teletubbies. They like Pound Puppies because they're Pound Puppies. They like playing football because it's a game they like playing. Not because it's a boy's game or a girl's game or... Because it's um, something that all the other transgender kids are doing. No. You know? Um, it's because it's what feels right to them. If a dress at the age of five feels okay, but doesn't at the age of six, that's their growth. That There's nothing wrong with that. Um, as an educator, you know, I, I promote that... I promote that self-exploration. I promote that self-expression. I, I want kids to be able to be comfortable. I want adults to be able to be comfortable too, but I, I always tend to, to worry more about children. Um, I want them to be comfortable in their skin. Imagine, and again, this is my, my teacher utopia mentality, but imagine if every kid who walked into a classroom was so comfortable in their skin with how they thought with how they felt. And no one picked on them for it. Emphasis on that one, because we, we're having all those bullying issues as of lately. That we didn't have to worry about the mental well-being in that regard. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm not just, I'm not just going back to the Texas incident, uh, because there's still so much that's unfolding with that one. Um, but I, I, I'm kind of primarily focused here at home right this second, but I mean, Leo got, Leo was out last week because I had, I had COVID and his, um, 
because he had been exposed, and that's the school's policy. So before you go, oh my god, why that doesn't make any sense? You should have been isolated. I was isolated. Uh, the school's policy is just that he was exposed, so he's out. Um, it turned out that the day that he was out, a hit, one of his teachers was out, and the substitute misgendered Leo, and a couple of students uh, misgendered him as well. Uh, probably intentionally. Maybe not. But most likely intentionally, since Leo has been Leo all school year. And Leo was like, well, how do I handle this? Because I want to beat the crap out of him. All right, well, that's a very masculine way of handling things, beating the stuffing out of something. Uh, so, but, you know, what does that get you? Where does that, where does that you know, go? What, what do you do? How does, that, how, how does that, anybody learn from that? He said, because it's, it's an experience. It needs to be a learning experience. And he's like, I don't know. I just know that I'm angry, and this is how I feel, and this is how I want to react. I'm like, okay, those are your feelings. You're entitled to your feelings. You're entitled to react. However, your reactions have consequences. Action and reaction. Physics. Right. We know that. So, again, um, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't, like, upset, like, cry, woe is me, I don't, I don't appear the part. It was, how dare they? Those bleepin' bleepy bleeps. Yeah, I'm going to bleep myself out for the moment, because I don't really know what he said, but I know what he was thinking. And those are not words we should hear on the radio. Or on a podcast. So, again, if, you know, he's comfortable with that, and that's okay. You know, it's good to be comfortable. And the thing of it is, is if he was comfortable with himself, and those kids were comfortable with themselves, and if we taught that it was okay to be comfortable with themselves, situations like that wouldn't happen. I wouldn't have to discuss with Leo the proper way of handling it versus the way we want to handle it. And, and uh, theoretically, they would coincide. Theoretically, it would never have happened. Um, but the, like I said, the thing of it is, is if, if our kids are confident with themselves and they're comfortable with themselves, it changes so much about their dynamics. It changes so much about their learning. Um, but again, we kind of have to instill that in them, that it's okay to be who they are. That they don't have to shop in the Barbie aisle. They don't have to shop in the truck aisle. Um, that it's okay that Barbie might drive a monster truck. It's okay if dinosaurs ride in Barbie cars. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, like, there's no... I, I honestly don't think there should be a, a boy or a girl aisle anymore. I think everything should... I don't see anything. I shouldn't. No, things can't be gender neutral because, let's just face it, there are things that are pink and there are things that are blue. Um... That doesn't necessarily mean that pink things are just for girls, though. And that blue things are just for boys. Girls can play football just like boys can play with Barbies. I got no issues. Ever. I just, um... Like I said, I, I just, I wish that there was a, a comfort level that... And like I said, we as parents, we can instill that in them. We can help encourage that they explore themselves and express themselves and be comfortable with themselves. Uh, unlike Leo's doctor. Anyway, all right. So that was my rant. That was my my big huge rant was Leo's doctor and you know this whole you know how dare you? Who are you? Excuse me. Oh, this heat wears me out. Something horrible, and I can't believe I yawned. Uh, here's the thing that I, I wanted to point out, and it it really got to me was that, you know, this doctor was like, you know, maybe you're wrong, or what do you know, maybe you don't know. Um, here's the thing, and I, I don't, and I, I guess maybe I'll better arm myself the next time I see this guy, but I, I want to remind him that gender dysphoria doesn't go away, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's extremely, extremely rare that gender dysphoria goes away after puberty. Extremely rare. Um, has it happened? Of course. Uh, but again, in rare cases. Um, how often do people change their mind? How often, I don't know if it's change their mind, but assume wrong about themselves. How often do people go, oh, mm, maybe I'm not transgender. Mm, maybe I'm not gay. Maybe I'm not bi. Maybe I'm not pan. It's, it's anywhere between 1% and 8%. So again, 1% and 8%. 1% and 8% of what number? What number? 
All right, so that, those numbers. I love numbers. I kind of sure I love numbers. There are, all right, in the latest census, so the 2022 census, or the 2021 census, technically, um, there was it recorded. Now, if we reported everybody in the country, all right, there are 332.4 million people in the United States. Let's do some numbers. 332.4 million. Of those, all right, in the same poll, 7.1% of that number identified as a member of the LGBTQ plus community. 7.1% of 332.4 million. That roughly translates into a a bleep ton, a, a, a load, a crap ton, a huge amount of us. It roughly translates into two or twenty three million, twenty three point six million, twenty three point six million of that twenty three point six million. All right, so now here we go, mathematically speaking, of twenty three point six million, twenty three. 23.6 million. One ah. percent. All right, let's 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 go on the high end. Eight percent of those. Eight percent of those um, uh, mis- are, are misidentified, let's call it that. They, they retransition, okay? They retransition. Out of that, that's 1,888,000. 1.9 million. million is a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. 1.9 million out of 332 is a ton. Okay. But here's the other thing. That's the high end. That's the extreme amount. If it's only 1%, it's only 1%. It's 236,000. 236,000 people in the LGBTQ community misgender. So somewhere between those two numbers. So here's the thing. Is this doctor hoping that LP falls into somewhere in between that 236,000 and the 1.9 million? Is he hoping that? Or is he expecting that he's going to be somewhere closer to the other end of that 236 million people? 230. That's the thing that gets me. 200. Or, I'm sorry. 2300. 23. I can't talk. 23 million. 23, did I put all the zeros in? I hope I put all my zeros in. Zero, zero, yeah. 23.6 million. 23.6 million, and he's hoping that Leo is somewhere in that 1%, 2%, 5%. Like, like, legitimately. Like, I, I get it, you know. Statistically speaking, no, probably not. Um... Uh, and the other thing is, is like how many, how many, how many of those that are LGBTQ community are are teenagers? So how many members, how many people who identify as LGBTQ plus? Oh, wrong number. G- oh, jeepers creepers, Q plus are teens. So they say one in six. One in six Gen Z adults are LGBTQ+. Um, now, you have to remember that half identify as bisexual. And usually that's women. Kind of odd that you think about it, but anyway. Okay. Um, because the... And here's the thing. With the census, we don't actually check teenagers. We don't ask teens. Um... But th- there's a nationwide survey out there by USA News, or not USA News, I'm sorry, US News, okay, um, that includes uh, 20,000 20, boys, 21,000 girls. They averaged at age about 16. And, um, more, as I said, most of them, uh, all right, so let's see, between, okay, this is between 2015 and 2019. There's a percentage of 15 to 17 year olds who said that they identified as non-heterosexual rose from 8% to 11%. Um, 